Now he looks absolutely thrilled, no doubt. He's been clapping, he's been cheering, waving his Indian flag there. And we've got the, uh, the team there all looking very proud indeed, answering the journalist questions. Um, how much of an achievement in terms of, you mentioned the economics of this all and sort of the potential riches that we could find. Is that really what this is all about, do you think, in terms of the money that could be achieved from this? Uh, a lot of it is. Um, so um, both directly in the space industry, um, but also indirectly just showing that you know, your nation is able to do very challenging things. And uh, you know, that makes it uh, more interesting perhaps for people to invest in, uh, in other ventures as well, not, not just space industry uh, ventures. So yes, the last couple of decades, you know, economy has been a major driver for, um, for the space industry. Um, and, and, and yeah, it, it, it's now part of that. Now, uh, India Of course, is... scientifically, it's also interesting <laughs> as a scientist, of course. Of course, the science is absolutely fascinating. Um, what kind of data do you think would be the most interesting? I mean, in all seriousness, if we do have humans living on the moon, how many years are we talking about here? 10, 20, 30, 50, 100? Um, so, uh, one of the reasons why this soft landing is important is that um, no, it's shown now that it is possible to softly land there in that terrain. Um, so that, that basically paves the way for others to do the same, including the Artemis uh, crewed mission in a couple of years' time. Um, what we're learning scientifically uh, from this mission is relatively limited. Um, you know, we might find some surprises, uh, but it's just to get a bit of a more general understanding of the properties of the of the surface of the, of the, the material there, uh, which also is important for future landings uh, to know where actually you're landing onto, uh, more, more than, than really understanding and having answers to all the questions we have about, about the moon. But that will, of course, follow. There are further missions planned. Um, also, the Russians uh, still have a few missions planned. Uh, Do you think and, the, Ru uh, the, the Russians this, will this, this... continue with their pursuit now that India's achieved this, and they're clearly still celebrating, as we can see there? Do you think that Russia will continue with its pursuit? Well, so obviously they had wanted the f this first and they've rushed a little bit to try to get this first and then that, that didn't work out. Of course, the risks become larger if you try to rush things. Um, I don't think they will give up. Um, they have um, lost a lot of their sort of uh, prominence in, in the space uh, industry. Uh, they're no longer the, the only ones being able to ferry crew and materials to the International Space Station, for instance. They're not the go-to place to launch satellites anymore. Um, and um, they need something to get, get back into that race. Uh, and, and again, for them too, uh, the economy of, of getting their own space industry involved uh, is, was a very important um, uh, motive. Mm. Um, I don't think they will give, give up. They, as I said, they have planned a few more and they can still be in there uh, for the long run. We're looking at Narendra Modi right now. He looks like he's absolutely reeling from it all and enjoying uh, this momentous historic day. Uh, we mentioned Russia, but we should maybe mention the US as well, because of course they were first there, weren't they? But they've gone very quiet over the years. Why do you think that is in terms of why they've not been in this race to go back? Because it's mainly been the likes of, well, Russia, also India, as we've seen today, and, and China. Why is that? Is it just pure economics? Well, no, uh, NASA uh, and uh, actually together with both international partners and the private industry um, have this Artemis program, which is a crewed program. So they're focusing on that now. Uh, they are probably quite happy for others to also do their own you know, landing attempts and you know, provide information um, to be used by, by them as well. So no, they, they, they have their own, own, own program that Artemis 1, which, which was an uncrewed uh, launcher, uh, was successful. Um, and uh, next year, uh, probably there will be a crewed mission, Artemis 2, going around the moon. And then the next one after that will land on the moon. And that will do so, as planned at least, uh, in, in a similar region in, near the South Pole. 
Um, so it is just a matter of a few years' time, and uh, they, they probably have people back on the moon. Uh, but yeah, it has taken a long time since the 1970s, where both the, the US um, and, and the, the then Soviet Union uh, were uh, routinely landing on the moon, mm -hmm. uh, for, the, for this now to happen again. And partly it's because there's such an interest from uh, uh, you know, a large number of countries and companies to, to get into this business, uh, that it is now finally um, actually uh, possible to do this. Mm. And we're looking at hundreds of excited school children, which is adorable. They're gathering there at the Assam Jatia School to watch uh, the Chandrians landing on the moon's South Pole. No doubt they'll be remembering this for really the rest of their lives. What a wonderful experience and an education for them. Yes, definitely. I mean, one of the very important indirect effects of doing these exciting things is that you, know, you inspire so many people, you know, just like in sports events, you know, people are looking and just feeling like, oh, wow, you know, we can do this. Uh, you know, maybe I can do something special too. Um, and you know, whether they to become engineers or, you know, or scientists, uh, that doesn't really matter. They, they, they can do great things in, in any walks of life. Uh, but this is important, and the same happens with the Apollo program, the landings on the moon. The people that witnessed that, that you know, they, were, they were basically changed forever. And so it's a very positive effect. You know, people sometimes ask, like, oh, is it worth all the, the billions of, of dollars uh, in, in this, this kind of ventures? But um, um, actually, it pays off uh, because it, it, you know, globally, it's not just the Indian people, but globally, of course, people are looking at this like you and I do now and think like, oh, wow, this, this has actually worked and we're going back to the moon. Um, so, yeah, that's very important. Yeah, it is very important. As you say, they're feeling inspired right now and a memory to cherish forever for those school children and maybe they'll want to be an astronaut one day who knows i just want to talk about what happens now because it opens up so many doors doesn't it because if you're landing on the moon okay it's already been done but other parts of the moon what more can we learn about the universe and what happens next do you think we'll be landing on other planets potentially maybe mars uh yeah that's possible um of, of course, the, the break was on for a couple of decades, so I think people are now a, a little bit more careful in making predictions when we would walk around on Mars, for instance. Uh, but it is a stepping stone. The Moon is, of course, uh, near to the Earth, so relatively easy to go to. Uh, but then once you're on the Moon, it's much easier to go from there to places like Mars. Um, and uh, living on the Moon for a while will also um, let us understand better what we need to do to be able to do that on a more distant planet such as Mars. Mars will be more difficult to land on, more difficult to live on. So um, the Moon is a good place to try out things first. And also by doing that, we learn a lot about um, solutions to problems we have on Earth as well. So it's not just about you know, finding out where, how we can live uh, in space or on other planets, but also actually how, how we can better live, live on the Earth. Actually, that's a really good point because on the news, we're always covering climate change issues in terms of the weather, for example. Do you think maybe we could learn from the moon and understand what's happening to our planet in regards to climate change, potentially? Uh, yes, we, we much better understand uh, the fragility of the Earth's uh, ecosystem. Um, and um, uh, trying to live under very difficult uh, conditions where you have to resource all sort of things that we take for granted on the Earth uh, makes you think twice about you know, what, what, what we're doing on the Earth, how we live on Earth, and uh, perhaps how we should uh, move uh, forward if we want to continue as a, you know, a wealthy and, and, and well-living species on this planet. Mm. And just to our viewers that may be are joining us just now. History has been made today because India is now the first nation to land near the moon's South Pole. It's never happened before. And we're looking at the leader of India right now, Narendra Modi, who is cheering. We've had school children waving and cheering, waving their flags um, in celebration of their country's great achievements. So just reiterate some of the points that we've made here, Jacko, because some people might be thinking, you know, we've got our own problems here on Earth. Why are we bothering to visit the moon? Tell us, is it worth it? Uh, yeah, you see the elation, thumbs up, um, soft landing, hopefully upright so the rover can get off. 
Uh, so we're going to learn a lot more. Um, and um, yeah, th th this is important for understanding more about the moon as well as the Earth and, and for inspiring people that, that are watching, not just the ones that are involved in this. Um, and economically, it will have lots of um, spin-offs um, as well as people directly getting involved in the, in, the, in the space industry, both in India and elsewhere. No, um, nobody likes to see others fail in their attempts because it's just not good advertisement for a space um, industry in, in general. So we're, we're all hoping that, that everybody will be successful in, in whatever they try to do, um, as well as do that uh, sustainably, um, of course. Um, so it is a very international um, uh, endeavor as well. So almost nobody is doing this completely on their own. So it's also a very good way of uh, crossing borders. Look at the space station. Russia is still involved in the space station, along with US, Europe, other countries, um, despite all the political troubles on, on the Earth. Yeah, that's so a possibly very good in point. space is where we can solve these. Mm, politics is always pushed aside, isn't it, when it comes to space. It's quite a unified area, which is fantastic. Well, brilliant to have you on. Thank you so much for your expertise. Really enjoyed uh, you being on the programme today, Jacko Van Loon. We're going to keep you with us, if you wouldn't mind, because it's an absolutely fantastic day for India and the history of space. Well, let's get more on this mission from Avzal Ahmad, who will explain what it's all about. Chandrayaan-3 launched on July 14th into a high elliptical Earth orbit. Over the following days, it gradually gained altitude before an engine burn on July 31st propelled it towards the moon. It then entered the moon's orbit on August 5th. Then on August 17th, the lander detached from its propulsion module and began the last phase of its mission. Now the critical and most difficult phase, the nail-biting descent from about 30 kilometers from the surface. The tricky task involves reducing the velocity of the lander, while at the same time flipping it from a horizontal to a vertical position. The lander named Vikram and its rover Pragyan aim to explore the surface of the little explored South Pole for a lunar day. That's roughly 14 Earth days. One of the major goals is to look for water ice, which scientists say could support human habitation on the moon in the future. It could also be used for supplying propellant for spacecraft headed to Mars and other distant destinations. We're delighted that our guest is staying with us today, the Associate Professor of Astrophysics at Keele University and the Director of Keele Observatory in the UK. Jacko, great to have you with us today. What a day for India. We've seen the celebrations, the crowds, the cheers, the flags, the school children as well. What an achievement for this emerging economy. Uh, yes, uh, exactly. I mean, it's, it's over a billion people. I don't know how many tunes into this, uh, but even those that didn't, they, they will get the news at some point. So this is not exclusive to just the engineers involved um, or the scientists that, that will be looking forward to the results coming out of this. Um, it, 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 it lifts the entire nation. Uh, so everybody's got a smile on their face, as you can see. Um, and uh, there, there, there will be happier people and happier people uh, live better, uh, live uh, healthier and uh, will do things better. Yeah, quite right. That's what it's all about. And for someone like you, you must be loving this. Uh, yes, I'm really looking forward to uh, the rover getting off the lander uh, uh, safely because that's the one that's actually going to um, 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 examine the, the composition of the, the soil. So as you, you're... Uh, colleague said, uh, you know, water is one of the interesting elements there. Uh, uh, from water, of course, water is needed for people to drink. And, but but uh, when you split it, you get oxygen, which you need to breathe uh, and can be used as a rocket uh, um, uh, propellant. Um, but, but it also tells us a lot about uh, where this water came from. Um, it was a surprise at some point to find water on the moon. It's now well established that there is water in the form of ice as well as captured in minerals on the moon. Um, but it is still a little bit of a, a mystery where the water on the earth came from, um, or even though it's, it's covered for 70% by, by water. Um, so as the moon was formed from the, moon, uh, from the earth by an impact very early on, uh, possibly this tells us a little bit more also where the, where the water on the earth came from. And do you imagine that this will accelerate tourism 
to the moon as well. Now that we're seeing this, do you think there's lots of billionaires out there that might fancy a trip sometime soon? Maybe not soon, but sometime. Um, so obviously this is an, an uncrewed mission and in fact a, a relatively cheap one at that. Uh, so it does show that it's, it's possible to do these kinds of things um, uh, no, within relatively small budgets. Um, but to put people on the moon is a lot costlier because of all the safety um, in, involved. Um, but the Artemis program led by NASA, but in, with involvement from lots of other uh, agencies as well as private companies, they are um, uh, going to make crewed missions uh, very soon. In the next couple of years, they hope to land uh, on the moon. Um, and with space tourism already taking off in low Earth orbit, um, of course, they are having their eyes on, on the moon to, to bring people to some kind of hotel on the moon. Uh, and probably that will happen at some point because it brings in revenue. Um, and uh, this is one of the reasons why, why the private industry wants to be involved. Uh, and the private industry often can do things cheaper. Uh, and in some cases, even better. Uh, if you look at SpaceX, SpaceX have been able to land uh, rockets back onto the Earth which is a technique that could be very, very useful uh, for landing on the moon, uh, as well as other, other planets like Mars in the future. Uh, and that will be necessary, of course, to bring people there. A hotel on the moon. What a thought that is. That would be absolutely incredible. Well, let's just remind our viewers who are maybe tuning in now, because it's a big day. You can see you've got these Indian astronauts and people working for their space station. They're all celebrating. Narendra Modi there, the leader of the country, clapping, celebrating because it's a historic achievement for the country. Becoming the first nation to land near the moon's south pole today. They weren't sure if it was going to be achieved and they've managed to do it. And as you can see, Modi there looks absolutely thrilled. And he's actually at the BRICS summit right now. So he's celebrating while he's there in there. South Africa, taking the time to uh, celebrate with um, his fellow Indians there. Well, what a day for the country. You can see they're looking at the footage and all enjoying it together. And we saw the school children as well. What a wonderful memory for them to make. And uh, perhaps they'll be incentivized to maybe be an astronaut one day. Who knows? And it's all about trying to discover what's there on the moon in terms of this water-based ice as well, Jacko, isn't it? Um, which sounds absolutely... I mean, how, how much water ice do you think there could potentially be there? I mean, is it sort of mind-boggling? Well, that, that's my worry. In, in fact, uh, uh, if, if it's going to be used as a resource for a lunar basis, because uh, it is, of course, uh, not unlimited. Um, so the first question is indeed, how much is there? So it's not known how much is there. Um, and secondly, um, what, what, what type uh, of, of water is there? Is, is it just in the form of ice? Is it captured in, in minerals? Can be easily uh, extracted from those minerals? Um, but, but simply confirming that there is water ice on the surface, uh, I think is a, scientifically an extremely uh, important um, um, uh, feats to achieve. Uh, wh whether they will or not um, is, is not clear because um, it's not entirely clear where exactly they landed. Um, it is a very rough terrain. The ice will be in permanent shade, um, so not all over the place. Um, so it's very different from the Arctic on, or Antarctica, where you have huge uh, um, fields of ice and snow. It's, it's not, not like that at all. Um, so they may or may not be lucky in, in being actually near any ice patches, um, but um, possibly the, the composition of the, the, the rocks will, will, will tell whether there is also uh, ice and, and, and water uh, inside the rocks.